With prices coming down, now is a great time to consider solar power for your boat. And why not? Who wants to constantly run the generator? Today on my boat, with a little help from Pat Tossi at SunTech, we're going to install a sun power solar kit and try to find out just how long you can go without running the Jenny. Before we go shopping, there are a few things to consider. Number one, determine how much energy your boat draws. Number two, would be the size of battery capacity that you need. And number three is the area for your solar that you require. People do have to consider not only real estate, how much room they have for panels, but where they're gonna put them. Why is the location important? Location is important because you wanna try and hit the, the highest point of the roof. So typically that's going to be your bimini or some type of hard top or dodger. You wanna avoid shading. So you want to make sure you have the utmost point to reduce the, the risks of shading from your radar arch or other instruments that are up there. What's the average 30-foot boat need roughly in wattage in solar? The average 30-foot boat in solar requires about 300 to possibly 350 watts of power. What's the cost for a complete system to start? You're looking at about for 300 watts about $1,200. The best place to start is with an energy calculation. How much power does your boat consume? The answer will drive both the battery bank and solar panel requirements. To estimate your average daily power requirements, simply add up the loads and duty cycle of everything that draws power from your 12 volt system. On this particular boat, we started with the fridge, which is the biggest power hog. You can check the label, or if you have a battery monitor, you can check the amperage in real time. This fridge draws 10.8 amps at 12 volts. That's the load. You also need to know how long it runs for. We checked the duty cycle on a worst case scenario, a hot day, and found it tends to run for about 10 minutes every half hour. That means it is running for about 8 hours every day. 10 amps times 8 hours equals 80 amp hours per day. That is a lot. Next are the lights. You can use either watts or amps, but it's a good idea to stick with one so as not to mix them up. The good news, they are interchangeable, since watts equals volts times amps. I count 12 lights in all living area, and most of them are LED. That's pretty good because all 12 are only drawn 3.5 amps. Combining the lights, fridge, water pump, a few cell phones, tablets and fans, we arrive at about 96 amp hours per day. If we can generate more solar energy than the boat consumes, we may never need to run the generator to charge the batteries. So how much solar do we need to stay ahead of the 96 amp hours this boat's consuming? Well, by my calculations, you're going to be looking at around 300 to 350 watts. Now that we know how much solar we need to keep up with energy demand, we check the battery age and capacity. For lead banks, recommended total capacity should be three to four times the daily load, which in this case would be 360 to 480 amp hours. This boat has six deep cycle six volt batteries for a total capacity of 690 amp hours, and they are only one year old. SunTech kits come with all the parts needed for installation, including ABYC approved tinned copper wiring. Next, we check the BIMI to see just how many panels will fit. 110 watt panels are 54 centimeters wide and just over a meter long. And with flex panels, you want to avoid placing them directly over a BIMI support. We don't have room for 310s, but we can butt two 50 watt panels next to a pair of 110s for a total of 320 watts. If you're doing it yourself, you should know that running the wire probably takes the most amount of time. You do have to get two 10 gauge wires from the engine bay at the battery bank all the way up to the top of the bimini. Fortunately, this boat has a conduit, but it was still really tricky because it was jammed full of wires. But we do have them run. And it's not a bad idea to leave them loose and not zip tie them right away. You've got to pull out enough to get to the panels on top of the bimini. Now one little pro tip, it's not a bad idea to mark one of the wires on both ends with something. Yellow tape, white tape, red tape, doesn't matter. Just to identify which one's which. So when you plug them in, you get the polarity right the first time. The charge controller is the brains of the operation, regulating the power from the solar panels to the batteries. It manages incoming voltage and regulates output to the batteries while preventing overcharging. With the wires run to the engine bay, we now must consider where to mount the charge controller. The closer to the batteries, the better. With the breaker and charge controller installed, we move on to the panels. Just make sure you leave the breaker open until the system is completely installed and ready to turn on. Mounting a panel above a bimini can be tricky. If you're not sewing Velcro in or finding a way to put grommets in, how do you do it without taking the canvas down? Well, Pat's found an ingenious way to mount a panel up there. These are rare earth magnets, and they're one inch in diameter. 
and they have up to 56 pounds of holding force. At six mounting locations, that's over 300 pounds of holding force per panel. Panel weighs approximately five pounds with these magnets attached to it. I think the great thing is you don't have to take the bimini down to sew stuff into it. We can do this with the bimini up. Absolutely. With the bimini in place, we laid out the panels and snapped the washers to the magnets in about 10 minutes. Before making the final connections, Pat recommends covering the panels to avoid any arcing. With the panels connected, we can now flip the breaker and start producing power. If you do opt for the Victron controller, you can download their app to your smartphone. It connects via Bluetooth to provide real-time charging information, battery voltage, and will even store up to 30 days of history. This makes it easy to know if your panels are keeping up with your energy demands and whether or not you should spark up the Jenny for a bit. We found we could actually go for five days without running the generator at all. Mind you, most of our lights are LED and we aren't running an inverter yet. Still, it's hard to believe we will run out of fresh water before we run out of power. Well, there you have it. 320 watts of completely silent power, generating six amps of current at about 5 p.m. on a cloudy day. I can't wait for the sun to come out. Pat? Great work. Thanks a lot, man. No worries. Since SunTech uses high-quality components designed for marine use, you can expect them to last.